Here it goes. Little hop there and we got to 60 in 6.57 seconds. Hey crew, I've got the key to that 23 Toyota Prius Prime. We are gonna take it for a drive, but first let's check it out what looks on the inside and outside. Like the standard Prius, the Prime enters a new generation, new platform, new powertrains, new design. Up here at the nose is a slender grille beneath the Toyota badge. We have cut out C-shaped headlights with LED DRLs and turn signals. Projector LED headlights on this XSC premium trim. Down low, functional front air dam with silver trim. And there are LED fog lights. This one is painted in Guardian Gray. It's a new color with a faint metallic flake on the paint surface. I like this color a lot. At the side, only the base SE Prime gets the 17-inch wheels. All others get these unique to Prime 19-inch wheels in a two-tone finish. Wrapped in Michelin all-season tires, 195 section front and rear. There's black gloss for the wheel arches, door mirrors, and window trim. Stepping back to look at the profile, here is where the new Prius is showing off the evolution of its teardrop shape. It is two inches lower, one inch longer, and the cab has moved further back on the body to make it sexy. I'm saying that about a Prius, and especially so for the Prime, which was an uglier version of the already not great looking previous generation Prius. Look at the slope of the roof line leading into this LED taillight bar with LED turn signals amidst a black background. Prius is spelled out on the lift back as is Prime. On the right hand side we find the charge port door and on the left is the fuel door. Down low is some gloss black for the bumper. The new Prius is making me feel things with its design. And that's something I never thought I would say about a Prius. And I like that the Prime doesn't feel the need to be any more obscure with the styling either. What do you guys think? Is this the best looking Prius ever? Let me know in the comments and let's check out the interior. Opening up with the handle up high and looking inside at this black interior, which is the only color option for the Prius Prime. Leatherette seats are here on this trim. Fabric seats are standard. There's red contrast stitching, seat perforations, and available rear seat heating. On the doors, hard plastics up high, leatherette padding for your arm, one touch up down windows, and a JBL sound system on this range topping trim. Stepping in, watching my head while doing so, behind my own seat at six feet tall, I've got enough knee room, no map pocket here, just on the passenger side. The foot pockets are narrow, so thigh support kind of suffers. Headroom is the bigger issue though. So my head's pressed against the roof. I can't make it back to that headrest, so I'm gonna give it a thumbs down. There are no air vents as well, even on this range topping trim. We've got two USB-C ports and an AC outlet, just a small hump in the middle to overcome, but the headroom's the bigger issue. So three full-size adults, not really gonna work in the back. There is an armrest that comes down with two cup holders and padding. Let's check out the front. Before we close up the door, note the dual pane glass roof. That's standard on this trim, but you can equip as an option a solar panel roof that will charge up the battery when the vehicle is stationary. Door closed noise is pretty solid. A little tinny sound there at the end. Smart keel sentry is for the front two doors. These front seats have red leatherette accents for the shoulder bolsters. They're heated and ventilated on this trim. The driver's seat is power adjustable. The passenger seat is manual adjusting. The hatch release is this button here. Hold that for a moment. And inside, behind the second row, we find 20 cubic feet of space. If you need more room and you've got this cargo cover removed, then you can pull on those two tabs and fold down the seats 60, 40, or 46 cubic feet of space. And there's a spot for your charging cables underneath the floor. Power close and lock button is on the lift back. Unlike the rear doors, up top on the fronts, is injection molding. We've got two positions of memory for the driver's seat, power adjusting, not power folding door mirrors. Stepping in. 
Drivers get a heated leatherette wrapped wheel. Feels great in the hands. Red contrast stitching on the inside. All these buttons don't look so good though. And I don't like the adjustability of the wheel. It won't go as high as I want. And in this position, it obstructs some of the TFT display. As standard, there's an eight inch touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wirelessly, but this is the upgraded 12.3 inch display. And either way you go about it, they're pretty responsive and easy to use. You've got a volume knob off to the right, some ambient lighting showing up on the dashboard above the red accenting, which I do like to break up the monotone of black. HVAC controls are here, two USB-C ports and a DC outlet. You can remove this tray for deeper storage. Two cup holders are here. We've got gloss black and not a great spot for wear and tear. Wireless smartphone charging pad, drive selections, padding for the console and inside is a good bit of storage with two USB-C ports. This one has the available digital rear view mirror to improve your visibility, which I think you need because the naked eye visibility is not the best with the blind spot of the C pillars. And there isn't standard blind spot monitoring. It's just on upper trim levels. The cabin look is premium. The seats feel great. The red accenting is cool. The technology is solid. Don't like the design of the driver cockpit and the rear passenger headroom is cramped. Now it's time to take the Prius Prime for a drive. All right, let's fire it up. We're beginning here as an EV, so the two liter four cylinder doesn't even start up. We just have those chimes to welcome us. The screen is on, the digital rear view mirror is going. We can choose our drive mode here. And let's begin in normal. And then to choose whether to operate as an EV or as a conventional hybrid, you have these selections. You can have it be in auto, or you can have it be locked into either hybrid mode or EV mode as long as the battery holds out. And you can even have it hold on to the charge for a later use. Hit this button to bring up a surround view camera system. Not sure how useful that view is. This one, much more useful. And then we also can go into reverse by clicking over and up. That will bring up another bird's eye view off the left-hand side, a wide angle backup view or a narrower view. We'll use this to start. We do have some trajectory lines. It's over and down for drive. And we can kick things off with a turning radius test here. Bring this camera back up, crank the wheel. That's a really tight turning radius. So useful. Let's listen for the turn signal sound. A unique noise. The stock actuating that was actually louder than the turn signal sound. And now for the world famous horn test. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm a horn. Let's talk about the powertrain in this new Prius Prime. We have the combination of a two liter Atkinson cycle four cylinder, two electric motor generators, and a 13.6 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. The Atkinson cycle four cylinder is larger in displacement. The electric motor generators are more powerful and the battery size is more than double the old Prius Prime. And so that means our power is up almost a hundred horsepower to 220 in the Prime and 215 pound feet of torque. And thanks to those more robust components, the all electric range in the Prime is up considerably compared to the predecessor that was 25 miles of range. Now we're up to, if you've got the 17 inch wheels, 44 miles of electric range, or if you've got the 19s, it's 39 miles. In fact, the only things that are down compared to the old Prius Prime are the combined MPG and MPGE ratings. The old Prius Prime, you add up to 55 combined MPG and MPGE of 133. The new Prius Prime, it's up to 42 with the 17 inch wheels for the combined MPG and up to 127 MPGE with again, those 17 inch wheels. Now, while we've been operating in EV only mode, 
which will not stop you from being in EV mode, even at full throttle, as we're doing here, I do want to change things up as we enter the highway. So I will hit this button here to go into hybrid vehicle mode. And I could not tell that that Atkinson Cycle four cylinder had turned on. Imperceptible. And we get up to speed very easily with all of that 220 horsepower. And at these highway speeds, the ride settles in so nicely. The NVH level from the road noise and tire noise are higher. Wind noise is not that bad. Also at full throttle here, you don't hear the whine of the CVT. You hear that four cylinder really start to work and there is a deal of passing power here. <laughs> no, that's not bad. That really is not bad. And if the traffic conditions were met being below 25 miles per hour, we could use the traffic jam assist feature that is now standard on the Prius Prime. So when you activate the adaptive cruise control with steering assist feature at those low speeds, it could be a hands-free affair. Here on the highway, I've taken my hands off to sh just to show how the lane trace assist works and how it keeps us in the center of the lane. It is going to, at some point, ask me to put my hands back on the wheel as it just did there. But you can see this system works really well and having that traffic jam assist is very nice as a standard asset. And now off the highway, I'll plop it into the auto mode and let it decide when it wants to be an EV or a conventional hybrid. This is probably how most Prius Prime buyers will find their commutes. Though I say that now that we have 40-ish miles of electric range, that's going to cover the majority of folks' commutes to and from work. And if they have the ability to plug in at work, they could just stay in EV mode for the entirety of their weekly journey, only needing to have that hybrid capacity when they're taking a longer trip. And that, I think, is what the Prius Prime has lacked up until this point, uh, apart from the power and the good looks, uh, is not having enough electric range to be able to stay in that operation for most daily driving. Using this auto mode, it's going to behave as an EV unless I really need the passing power. And the other things about the standard Prius I certainly find to be true here for the Prime this platform has excellent ride compliance. The steering, and I will go into sport here just for fun, is more natural. And though it's light, you can place the vehicle within the lane much better than the predecessor Prius. And the Prime feels like it can handle itself. I'm not saying it's going to be a canyon carver. but it's actually pleasant to drive. And that's in addition to things like a new hydraulic brake booster. So you've got a more natural feel to the braking. The switch off between friction and regen braking is smoother. I just feel like Toyota is getting closer to that perfect sweet spot of the flexibility of a conventional hybrid with the functionality of a BEV. The only thing left to find out now is whether the Prius Prime is quick to 60. So I've got my race box set up here and we're going to find out at this light. Here it goes. Little hop there and we got to 60 in 6.57 seconds. That's better than their own estimate of 6.6 .6 seconds. This is in a Prius guys, six and a half seconds. And let me remind you that we just did that in a front wheel drive Prius. Toyota isn't even offering an all wheel drive version of the Prime. So I guess if you need that, if you live in a place with inclement weather, you'll have to get the standard Prius with its only 194 to 196 horsepower. But if you don't live someplace like that, this front wheel drive setup is, is just fine for performance. 
So, it is a pretty rosy picture for the new Prius Prime, but to really give us context here of how much of an improvement this is, we need to jump in the last generation of the Prime. So let's go do that, and we'll come back and wrap up with some competitors and pricing information. Okay, I've managed to swap into the last generation of the Prius Prime. I've got a dazzlingly not attractive red version of the car, and now we're going to fire it up. Oh. Didn't expect that. We've got a little welcome animation on the vertically oriented screen here. Our drive mode is selected here, and we've got power, eco, or normal. We'll start in normal. And just like the new Prius Prime, we've got a way to switch between EV and hybrid vehicle, or just go EV auto. We'll start out in the EV mode. And with this funky little dongle here, I'll go over and up to into reverse, which has a very not high resolution backup camera without trajectory lines. Oh, it makes that sound the entire time we're in reverse. That's annoying. It's over and down for drive. We'll try out the turning radius here. That's about as good as the new Prime. And why not? Let's do a world famous horn test in the old Prius Prime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just about as dinky as the new one. Now, initial impressions from the driver cockpit area, I much prefer the adjustability of this steering wheel to the new Prime. I can get it higher. My seating position feels as high, but there is more headroom here, and the visibility is not quite as obstructed by the headliner. I I think I like this setup actually better because I can see the display up there compared to the new Prime where the steering wheel kind of bisects it. I don't like this nearly as much as the new Prime. And when I'm sitting in those back seats, I feel like I have just a little bit more headroom. Like the new Prime, in EV mode, it will lock out the hybrid functionality when you are on full throttle. And that I do appreciate so you can stay in EV mode. But unlike the new Prime, when I do switch to the hybrid capacity, I've been flooring it for the last few seconds, and I felt like nothing happened. I could hear the four-cylinder come on, but I felt no change in the thrust. And that's, that doesn't inspire confidence. And I mean, to be fair, let's go into the sport drive mode, the power mode, sorry. And I put my foot down, And you'd have to hope for a lot of generosity from fellow traffickers for you to be able to make a passing maneuver. And that's not something you should uh, bank on. And at highway speeds, the ambient volume inside this cabin certainly isn't quieter than the new Prius Prime, but I, I can't really tell that it's any louder. We don't have things like that traffic jam assist but we do have adaptive cruise control and a lane keep assist system here. As far as ride compliance goes, I can tell that this older platform is bouncier over imperfections in the road. And furthermore, there's more vibration that enters the cabin. And so you're not as relaxed at the helm of the older Prius Prime as you are in the new one. And then dynamically, still floored. Of course, the power is one thing, but the handling is another. There's so little communication that comes back through the steering that my sense of where I am in a lane is extraordinarily vague. It's only visual. And so, at best, the old Prius Prime is a bore to drive, but at worst, it's, it's kind of sketchy. And now I'm not expecting greatness at all from this zero to 60 run, but I do have my race box set back up once more. And we're gonna see how the Prius Prime old model compares. Slippage off the line. We're still working on it. Hey, we found 60 in 10.48 seconds. <laughs> All right, I've seen enough from the old Prius Prime. 
it's really not good to look at on the outside. The ride isn't as supple, the steering is way more vague, the power is at such a deficit, and the all-electric range is lower, all than the new Prius Prime. The only things I think that they make a little worse in the new design is that the cabin feels more constricted in the new Prius Prime versus this old one. But let's hop back to that new model to wrap things up. It is clear that this new Prius Prime is a massive improvement over its predecessor. And that's great for Toyota, but we have to put that in context with the rest of the plug-in hybrid space. So the starting figure for the new Prius Prime, it's about $33,300 for the starting SE grade. If you want the XSC, that's a little under $37,000. And if you want the XSC Premium, that's about $40,000. This one has tested a little under 42 grand for all the bells and whistles. Competitors include vehicles like the Kia Niro plug-in hybrid that's just a little more expensive to start. It makes less power, it has less all-electric range. There is the Ford Escape plug-in that's a little more expensive to start. It makes about the same power, still has less range. It's got the Dodge Hornet RT that is more expensive to start by actually quite a bit. It makes more power and it has less range. We can also consider the Subaru Crosstrek plug-in that has much less range it costs a little bit more and the power is down to this as well and finally i mean within toyota's own portfolio you can look at the rav4 prime that is a big step up in price the range is about the same the power is also a big step up i think this new prius prime is in a really good spot not only is it not embarrassing to drive you might actually be proud to drive it based on how good it looks on the outside the cabin has some nice tech upgrades the range, the power, the way it drives, the compliance, it's all really, really solid. I'm curious which you guys would choose, this one or any of the vehicles I mentioned in this comparison. This is just a first drive, so I'm not going to reach a verdict per se, but if you enjoyed this first drive, please like, comment, and share the video. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell to get notified, and I'll see you next time.